Metropolis, we are so excited to see you. It's time for worship and we have a brand new song. So let's stand up, find a spot in the room and let's get ready to worship. One, two, three, yeah, let's begin. Everybody knows what time it is. We're gonna start this party again. One, two, three, yeah, let's begin. Move your feet as we try to be in. This is our moment. This is our chance. Yeah, we got every reason to dance. Wow, guys, what a fantastic job worshiping together. That was so great. Raise your hand if you think friendships are important. I know I do, and so does God. And this week, our Bible story is all about friendships and how we need to find friends to help point us in the right direction. I can't wait to see what this Bible story tells us. Let's check it out. It's Haley here, and I love parties. Don't you just love parties? I love all kinds of parties. <laughs> birthday parties. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday dear Haley. Happy birthday to me. And who doesn't love a good block party? Feedback toss. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I could use some lessons. <laughs> Which is why friendship is so important. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. It's kind of hard to have a party without friends. And honestly, it's hard to even plan a party without friends. You need a tall friend to hang the lights. <laughs> you need a friend who can bake. Mmm! And if you got a friend who's giving beanbag toss lessons, tell them to give me a call. The point is, we need friends, and friends need us. And in today's story, we're gonna talk about what makes a friend a friend. That sounds like fun! It makes me wanna party!
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made with three cords isn't easily broken. Let's see how this might play out in someone's life today. Jackson slid into the small school theater and took a seat in the back row and waited for Mr. Ray, the music and arts teacher. Looked like there was only one other kid who showed up to build the set for the fifth grade production of Charlotte's Web, a mall from Mrs. Wiseman's class. Hey. Hi. The two boys sat there in awkward silence until Mr. Ray showed up. Ah, my set team, fantastic. You guys know each other? Kinda. Different classes. Well, you gotta get to spend a lot of time together in the next two weeks as we build this set and get it painted. You guys got any experience with power tools? Jackson could see Amal shift nervously in his seat. No, I just, I don't wanna go on stage. Miss Wiseman said I could do this instead. Don't worry, I'll teach you what you need to know. How about you, Jackson? I'm pretty good with a hammer, and I didn't want to wear some silly animal costume. The two boys basically ignored each other as Mr. Ray showed them how to measure each piece of lumber for him to cut, and then he helped them lay out the pieces in a large frame. Now, this'll be one of the wall flats for the backdrop. We'll paint it as part of the barn. Amal, you want a hammer in these nails? Uh, I guess. I'll hold it more like this. Don't worry, you'll get it. I'll do this side. Jackson nailed together the entire flat while Amal still struggled with one corner. Ah, what a klutz. But it was a different story the next day when they started to paint. This flat is part of our barn wall. I want you guys to paint a couple of chickens right there. Amal grabbed a brush right away. Oh, do, do you want them to look like real chickens or like cartoons? Nah, just give them your own personal spin. Amal got to work right away, creating an entire palette of colors while Jackson was still trying to figure out which brush to pick. Now, I've got to run down to the art room. Amal, why don't you show Jackson how to get started? I don't really... Mr. Ray smiled at them both. He needs a hand. I think you guys will make a great team. Mr. Ray hurried out. Jackson and Amal avoided each other's eyes. <clears throat> well, I'll sketch an outline for the chickens. What do I do? Just, you know, fill it in. <sighs> I'm not really an artist. Jackson dipped his brush randomly in the blue paint and frowned at Amal's outline. Just have fun with it. Jackson swiped the blue brush, outlining a wing. <laughs> I've never seen a blue chicken. Oh. It's great. It'll stand out. Oh, uh, thanks. By the time Mr. Ray returned, Jackson was surprised to discover that he and Amal had already painted five brilliant hued chickens. Mr. Ray grinned. I've never seen a more flamboyant flock. Jackson held out his fist to Amal, and Amal, surprised, gave him a fist bump. Yep, see you boys tomorrow. The next day, Amal showed up with a bruised finger on his left hand. I can still paint with my right. What happened? Mr. Kunkel keeps putting me in as goalie during PE, and then I mess it up, and everyone on the team gets mad at me. Uh, do you stay on your toes? Keep your eye on the ball? No, I just panic when the ball comes at me. Look, I can show you some tips later in the parking lot before my mom comes. Really? That would be great. And you know, Jackson turned out to be a pretty good teacher because Amal managed to get two blocks during PE the next day. And when Jackson showed up to paint sets, stressed out by a math test, Amal grabbed his textbook. Fractions? Uh, I see all these weird numbers and I freeze up. You just have to break it down like this. With the mall's help, Jackson managed to stay calm during his test the next day. And by the middle of the next week, they had completed the entire backdrop for Charlotte's Web. Well done. I knew you two would make a great team. Amal's pretty okay. Jackson's not too terrible. Look, 
I know you guys are really different from each other, but it's boring if all your friends are just like you. Together, they started gathering wood scraps and wiping off brushes. Seriously, one of the wisest men to ever live pointed this out. Solomon. Solomon? Yep. He's this king in the Bible. He was a builder and an artist and super rich too. But for all the things he had, you know what he valued most? Friendship. He says it like this. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Hmm. On point. Yeah. Amal held out his fist and Jackson tapped it with his own. Maybe Solomon and Mr. Ray were onto something. Okay, here are four things you can learn from those verses in the book of Ecclesiastes. Number one, friends get more done when they work together, which makes a whole lot of sense. Planning a party goes a lot faster when I've got someone to help me out. Which brings me to number two, friends help each other. A true friend doesn't just sit back and watch when it's obvious you need a hand. Little help, little help here. Oh. Ah! Number three, friends stand up for each other. You better not be messing with one of my friends. I will totally fight you. Unless, you know, you're bigger than me, then I will not fight you. In which case I will totally reprimand you with some carefully planned certain words. Just don't mess with my friends, okay? Uh, and number four, friends help you trust God. You may have a lot of different friends in your life, but a true friend, one that lasts, is the kind that helps you make wise choices. The kind of friend you can talk to about what you believe honestly, and who can help your faith in Jesus grow. So here's the one thing to remember today. Choose your friends carefully. I think you should try to be a friend to everybody, whether it's a friend you choose or not. But when you're deciding who to spend most of your time with, you should choose carefully. Ask yourself, is my friend helpful? Would they stand up for me? Do they help me trust God more? And while you're at it, ask yourself this, am I a helpful friend? Would I stand up for others and help people trust God more? Hmm. When you want to find good friends, one of the best things you can do is to be a good friend. And never forget, that Jesus is your ultimate friend. He is always there for you, no matter what. So, be on the lookout for good friends this week. When you choose wisely, you can't miss. Wow, friends, wasn't that an awesome Bible story? It's so great to remember that we need to choose our friends carefully so they can help point us in the right direction to show God's love to the whole world. Parents, don't forget to check out the discussion questions coming up next. And if you want to go further, you can check out the activity sheet in the link below. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye, friends.